So you know he's not going to play anything. His only chance here really is to get extra wolves out or like a Nissa. That's that's not good enough. I have three questing beasts. I need to take advantage of the haste, the death touch, the vigilance, all of that. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Good game. Hello everyone, it's the Grey Goose, and today on our Green Friday random daily deck tech, we drew up the colors of, well, just mono green. So I figured it was time to play another mono green stompy with a little bit different version of the deck than I played a couple weeks ago, and I'll explain it in the deck tech, which we'll get right into, and then we'll get into the gameplay. So for a mono green stompy, we go a little bit more with the value engine route of having the great henge. Only two of, but we have quite a few activators that are really cheap to cost here, you'll notice. We got four of the one CMC Pelt Collector. Of course, he gains plus one, plus one every time something stronger on your side of the board comes in, more power or dies. Once he gets to be a 4-4, four, four, he has Trample. That's worth noting, too. Wildwood Tracker, one CMC for a 1-1. One, one, and anytime, basically anything else in your deck is on the board, when he attacks or blocks, he's 2-2. Two, two. So he's not that good, believe me. But the fact of the matter is, early on, he can kind of hold his own. Plus, when the Great Henge comes down, you want to be activating it as much as possible for super cheap. Not to mention, he could theoretically eventually become a 3-3. Three, three. Growth Chamber Guardian, too much synergy to not include in this deck. So four of, two CMC, and then you get to adapt for three CMC. And when you adapt, he gets two plus one plus one counters, and then you find another one in your deck. So this is good for a card draw value engine, not to mention if you have the Great Henge down and you throw a Great Growth, cha growth Chamber Guardian down, he automatically gets a plus one plus one counter, so he automatically triggers. So you're gaining the one card regularly, plus you're finding another Growth Chamber Guardian just for slapping this boy down from the Great Henge. Worth noting though, since he has a plus one plus one counter, he can't adapt anymore, so he'll be stuck as a 3 3. Paradise Druid, we're, we're kind of low on lands in this deck, so having her for mana ramp and also being a hexproof card is pretty cool. And she triggers your pelt collector to buff up on curve. Voracious Hydra just times three in the main board. He's too flexible not to as well with all the plus one plus one counters he'll eventually be getting up to with all the mana ramp we eventually will have. Plus he can uh, target fight a creature of value, edge wall innkeeper, risen reef, etc. Four of the love struck beast, just a great blocker, great attacker. Not to mention if you start getting some plus one plus one counters on your love struck beast, he just gets to be your biggest creature on the board. Yorvo, he's pretty nice in that he synergizes well with the deck that we're going to be laying down all of our creatures. So he just gets plus one plus one every time a creature on your side of the board comes in that's a non-token. So basically all of our creatures except for the love struck beast human. Four of the questing beast, obviously a great include in any green deck these days. Just having the haste, the vigilance, the death touch, can't be chump blocked, and deals damage to planeswalkers, very very nice. Also synergizes well with our... Vivian Arcbow Ranger. So for 4 CMC, you can minus 3 and deal damage from one of your creatures to an opponent's creature or planeswalker. So if it's a creature, the death touch from the Questing Beast alone means you automatically kill anything for free on your opponent's side of the board. Plus, not to mention the plus 1 plus 1 counters, your creatures start getting massive and they also start getting trample each turn, which is very important to get through chump blockers and such. And the higher that your power creatures go, the cheaper the Great Henge is going to cost. So you can quickly get it down to like 4 CMC, 3 CMC, and then you put the Great Henge down and you gain 2 CMC back immediately with the uh, tap ability. For lands, we just have 23, and that's 24 with 3 Castle Garen Brig. I think this is a good amount because you would never, ever, ever, ever want to see 2 Castle Garen Brig in your opening hand unless you also happen to have a forest. So it's important to not go all the way with the Castle Garen Brig. Sideboard, once again, our, our targeted removal is important to have, and we have some of that in the deck with the Vivian and the Voracious Hydra, but sometimes you need more. So Prey Upon is good. It lets us fight whatever we don't control. So anything flying we want to kill or any value engine they have, there's are great for just one CMC. This uh, is essentially the same thing. It's Thrash, so it's three of instead of two of because A, it is instant, and B, it 
it just deals the damage and not to mention it's to creature or planeswalker you don't control so this is much better than the prey upon it just costs twice the mana plus with the instant if you're going into the attack step and you're going up against a bigger a bigger creature that you want to get through you can thrash to deal the damage at the beginning of the combat phase and then you can deal the regular combat damage and your super low attack damage creature suddenly took out something much bigger than your opponent expected three of thrashing Bronodon, pretty good overall stats and body for three cmc and a green deck but mostly you just have him in to get rid of target artifact or enchantment enchantment which there's a lot of these days i have four shifting ceratops simply because i really really do hate simic flash and anything with a bunch of counters so yeah just good to have in plus he's really your only way to block a flying creature and you have to cast a you have to use a forest to do it but he can reach he is your one way of effectively neutering a hydroid crisis unless they get absolutely massive then you can only block four of the uh, attacking damage coming in but he will survive indefinitely against said Hydroid Crisis. Two of Nyssa who shakes the world. There's some matches that you know you have to play ultra greedy instead of aggro, and that's when you want to slide her in. And one more of Voracious Hydra. As the game gets later, he just gets infinitely better. He has the trample, he can fight whatever, he can buff up to double plus one plus one counters. Just so good. Okay, so we're on the play. We have a pretty crappy looking hand, but I'm going to keep it. Because we're, we're on the draw. I said we're on the draw, right? What the heck is this? What is this? Let me play it and then look at this guy. Because what the heck is it? It's an artifact. The deck. Oh, this looks fun and interactive already, doesn't it, guys? Yikes. So, it's a gargoyle. Right. There's our Emery. This is going to be a very nasty deck to play against, guys. I, I hope you understand how terrible it's going to be. Uh, I do like having the Growth Chamber Guardian here, but it doesn't really do anything for us. We're pushing a little bit more damage than he is right now. He's going to bring something back from the graveyard. What is this? Oh, yeah, it's going to give 1-1. One, one. Cool. So this is getting out of control super fast, super fast. Uh, I do not like this one bit. Of course, I would draw into another Growth Chamber Guardian, wouldn't I? But let's just get rid of these cards in our deck because we're going to need every little advantage we can because he got Emery out this early. No attacks. Right. So next turn we can Great Henge, that's pretty cool. The problem is the Steel Overseer, right? Because everything's going to get really beefy, really fast. You see how ridiculous this is, guys? Look how ridiculous this is. Look at this. Well, you don't have Trample, do you, fam? You don't have Trample. There's that very, very small sliver of hope. Three for five. Okay. So this gets us uh, our last Growth Chamber Guardian and it draws us a card. Pretty cool. We can chump block again. Take action. There we go. Um, we can't push any damage through because of the corridor monitor. Look at look at this Emery just doing God's work over here. Look, look how insanely, insanely lucky he got i'm not gonna lose to an artifact deck i'm sorry guys this is mm -mm -mm. no we're not the thrashing bronodon prey upon voracious hydra mm, yeah thrash so all this is going to be about is killing his target creatures we don't need wildwood tracker here whatsoever because it's not going to be big enough uh what else do we not necessarily need here I think the Lovestruck Beast 5-5 five, five is good, but he's going to ramp out too fast anyways. Let's get rid of one Yorvo, one Pelt, two Pelts, two Lovestruck. So this is a tight deck. Even with 23 lands, you, you like all the pieces that are in there. Uh, but you, you have to have that targeted removal against his... Oh my god. 
Oh, this is bad. But if I go down, I have a quite high chance of having the same amount of lands or even less. So I'm not going to risk it. Let's just hope he doesn't have that perfect curve of stupid artifact into Emery the following turn. Because that's all it took. Yeah, multicolor. Well, you know he's useless here. You know that, don't you? I wish I could play this, but it's not going to do a dang thing. So let's attack. And he might actually trade. Alright, he didn't. So starting this turn, Love Struck Beast is cool. Even Voracious Hydra. Ooh, yeah, we got to get rid of that, don't we? So this is why you have to have those targeted removals. It's auto pay, come on. There. So that's what makes him big and scurry. We're going to attack again. All right. Maybe I should be holding that back because potentially... Go for it. Get your three damage in. You're super spooky, aren't you? And do we want to now play the Lovestruck Beast or push some damage? I think being a 4-4 that's only going to get bigger is fine here. Right. So let's go in. Get a little bit of damage. We It's, it's going to be a quite back and forth brawling match. What the heck is this? Prey upon. All right. So let's do this. This might not be the right play, honestly. But I want to be a bully when and where I can at this point. Down to 11. Cool. Yep. So this guy thinks he's pretty uh, unique and cool because he's playing an artifact deck. It doesn't bother me one bit, one bit. So Great Hand seems pretty nice here. Why? Why are you acting like you're going to keep up with me in damage? What is this guy's problem? This does nothing for me this turn, huh? Alright, so we're just going to be a big old bully. Yep. The owls aren't going to do it, fam. So do I want to make any changes? I think it's really silly of him to keep those um, stone coil serpents in, in there. They're, they're going to be useless. The whole thing about them is the multicolor protection. All right, got him all again. He did too, so I feel fine. This is going to be a keep. Mmm, thrashing. Mmm, 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 mmm. I guess Yorvo it is. I don't want to do that, but I, I do want a thrashing Bronidon onto a target. A key creature. Ooh, hoo, hoo, that's so good too. Vivian. Next turn, Paradise Druid, and then we have to keep her alive, at least till we guarantee ourselves some lands down the road here. I was going to say, I'll gladly take that, but okay. So, yeah. This is looking extremely good now, with the Prey Upon, and the Thrashing, and the Vivian. Ooh! What you gotta do with your silly little artifact deck? If he goes to attack again without pumping him up, I'm definitely... Okay, so that has to die. And it will. It will die. Okay, cool. So now we just play our silly little Vivian. Close your eyes. Got him. Alright, so he has to keep spending one mana each turn here for his Ginger Brute. He's gonna kill the Vivian. Or do that. Look, I have a prey upon, guys. Like, this is so insane. And now our Vivian's gonna come back with full loyalty. This guy is not unique in his deck. Like, do not play this, guys. You're not being... You're not being cool or... What do you call it? Hip. Alright. There we go. I've survived an apocalypse. Yeah. I will survive. Game one, good for you. Okay, we're on the play here. We do have a somewhat decent early game. And we'll go for it. I do like having the Pell Collector this early, and we have two lands. So I'm just banking on we get a, a third one here somewhat soonish. What are we going up against? He mulligan down to six. Maybe some Golgari fun, I call it. Golgari fun. 
Now we really just need to hit our lands, or a Paradise Druid would even be acceptable. Speaking of Paradise Druid, right? Look at this. Um. Okay. I can't really race this Hydra for anything worthwhile here. Let me attack first. To see if I get a tempting trade in, but nope, it didn't work. Oh well. Oh well. Could add one more damage in, but eh. Okay, Reggie. Reggie's good, I'll give him that. Maybe I'll get one more land. Look at this. So this would put me at 3-6. Eh. 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 Not quite, huh? Alright. Well, questing beast. And what we'll do here, right? I want him to discard a card. I could have attacked, but he probably would have blocked. I want him to discard a card. So he could kill the questing beast, but he still can't go in. Oh, that was clutch though. I should have thought of that. Ah, eh, good on him. I didn't even suspect that. I like this version of Golgari, I guess you call it adventures? Or Golgari mid? I like this version the best uh, because of that ro exact combo right there. So we're doing this for sure. Yep. But to, to Reggie into a green, green, great hinge is insane. All right. Oh. We just start laying the smack down a little bit on him. So with the great hinge, it's not really a, a thing you could say about his uh, discard having an, any impact because he's just, he's like all creatures. It's like all creatures. He's just gonna chain them. But that's a really neat deck I like. Voracious Hydra's getting to, to the point where he's gonna be pretty awesome here. The Vivian was clutched though. I guess I could have went in with the one one, but I wanted to protect the Vivian at all costs. All right, there we go. There we go. So, this is unfortunate, isn't it? This is unfortunate. That was pretty clutch of him to have that right there. So, good on him. We're going in with both. Is he going to chump? I mean, I'm okay with this. On, on, obviously. So, we have six damage potential each turn. He has two healing each turn. I was gonna say he might be at the point though where he just is he just didn't land a creature at the clutch moment all right so that's almost lethal it's looking spooky unless he has some sort of board wipe but I what would that require even a um, yeah this isn't enough for him he would have to chain into more okay is he going to hold back? I think he has to attack, right? The 1-1 one, one is really throwing him off. Yeah, okay. The Hydra, I, I, I don't think I would have had the reach to, to beat him, but whatever. Okay. So we got to get rid of those Great Hinge. Those, he has, he has at least two, if not three or four in that kind of deck. Uh, definitely with the uh, Thrashing Bronodon, but do I need more? Don't need the Ceratops. Prey Upon is decent. I do like the thrash though. The thrash is pretty clutch. So, what do we get rid of? Uh, Wildwood Tracker. You know, if if we could be greedy with our two great hinge, maybe, but we I don't think we can be greedy. We have to go for value. Like, we have to be a threat. Uh, so since we have the thrashing in, we have to take out two more. I think the answer is going to be one Voracious Hydra and... One Yorvo. Simply because the Love Struck Beast comes in as a 5-5. Five five. The Yorvo is a 4-4. Four four, and I think that's going to make a big difference. That one uh, power and toughness. Right then and there. So we're on the draw again. Ugh. Ugh. Watch him have like an edge wall innkeeper. I don't know. Is it is it is it just mid-range or is it adventures? It might have just been a mid-range. That's cool that we have a questing beast right there. So next turn is going to be Pelt Human. Yeah. And I like having that Garen Brig too. 
I will gladly take this trade. But he doesn't want to. I don't blame him. So, now we're going to start having some beefy looking boys here. You ready? All right. Cool. Once again, I will take any and all trades here. I don't want him ramping out. I was kind of hoping he was going for the human, but he didn't. So does he have some sort of board wipe? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, good for him. So he's gonna have to keep it up though, isn't he? Because we're laying down a lot of pressure and we have the Vivian to death touch on a Reggie or whatever. If he has one land, it's Reggie Greathenge, which is insane. No. Don't you do that to me. Oh, what a jerk. Maybe he'll he'll let us draw or something, huh? What a jerk. Nope, he didn't let us draw. Ooh. Alright. So, how much you want to bet that he's chilling? Chilling with a casualties of war. I really want to get value here. I want to get... I want to get the Great Hinge down. If he's got a casualties... See? Okay, fine. Whatever. At least we got it out of the way. Ugh. All right. Nope. He's just gonna have to keep, uh, you know, having insanely valued cards, isn't he? He might have another casualties and another, or an assassin's trophy, or a murderous rider. So it's definitely mid range. It's not adventure whatsoever. And this is really, really good. So that goes down two more. This is perfect, right here. Yep. Plus one, allows us to Great Hinge, allows us to Pelt Collector. Alrighty guys, so if you're enjoying this content, if you're new to this channel, I just want to invite you, if you want to, like or subscribe. I make a random daily deck tech video every day. Catch you guys tomorrow. Okay, we're on the play. We have a good turn one into a turn two. That's giving us three mana, so we're going to keep. Hopefully we draw into a land though in the next couple turns. Hey look, it's Simic Colors. Always fun. Always fun. Well, we're, we're looking decent here. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe this is a Simic Ramp instead of a Simic Flash version, but I would doubt that. Right, right, right. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get this dude out. Quench? Not gonna quench me, is he? All right, so we go in for the attack first. Uh, yeah. I feel like he only had a quench. Nope, he had a growth spiral. So I called that wrong. Called it wrong. Now he's up to four. Frilled Mystic, Nightpack, Ambusher, all of that fun and interactive stuff, right, right guys? The, the problem, though, for him... is how he how he deals with this how's he gonna do this huh we're getting four damage in that's that's not all right so this is good this is really good okay he should have noticed something was up that's his fault no sweat off my back guys civilization has crept too far tear it down so we got rid of one of his you big threats very important he has nothing hasty, so he can't kill the Vivian. Now our guys are just going to start getting insanely big, and I'm not going to attack. I don't have to. You got to bounce or something? He's like, what do I do about this, guys? What What do I do? Do I flash in a fairy? He's going to have to flash in a fairy, essentially. Yep. So he left up just enough to flash in a fairy, you'll notice, right? Um. So here we go, right? He's going to get plus one, plus one. So he's going to be a two, two. How do I want to do this? Three. I think I'll just try this. And if he quenches or counters, then we know what's up. But if he lets it go through, we know that we're getting flashed in for the Vivian kill, right? So he's weighing his options. Do I let the big Yorvo come down or do I threaten the Vivian? So this poor guy, he really thinks this is okay. Whatever. 
I don't want our Paradise Druid to die. You're fit enough to survive. All right. So he's gonna bounce her flash here. Maybe not right here, but after the attack, maybe. Oh, he's bouncing. Cool. He didn't get to flash in though, did he? We're going one for one with Paradise Druid. Yeah, no, maybe. Ooh, so now he's gonna bounce in Paradise Druid. Wow, look at that, guys. Look at these plays he's making. What a pro. What a pro. So he's gonna bounce for two, and then he's gonna have four up. Actually, he's gonna have five. So yeah, here we go. What? What's he got for four? And he's using all of his blue except for Paradise Druid. So he went all in to kill the Vivian. Yes, he did. Rise, my elemental friend. So our Vivian is dead. That is just a shame. Nope, not dead. We don't have any lands, do we? Uh, what can I do here, though? Hmm? So he, he definitely has enough to, to be a big bully to us. Let's do this first. See if he counters that. Let's see if he counters this. Nope. So Yorvo being a five is pretty important. Pretty important. All right. That is good looking. And they have trample. That is really good looking. So, you guys ready for a bounce? <laughs> Stop it's it. a bounce house after all. Here we go. Your role is getting bounced. Probably the forest and the paradise get tapped to bounce, and then since I'm trying to attack the Nyssa, the island kills the Wildwood Tracker. Oh, no, they won for one. Never mind. Alright, you, you can see him doing the 3D math in his head. How do I do this, guys? How do I do this? <laughs> really? No bounces? What are you doing? Doesn't matter though, if he gets one Hydroid Crisis down, everything we've worked for is. Yeah, look, so. Here we go! Alright, so he's dealing six. Look at that, he survives with one health. Can you believe it, guys? He has just enough every time. Why didn't he uh, plus one to land there? I will never know, but I don't care. We need a land. We absolutely have to have a land. It doesn't matter, never mind, because Hydroid Crisis. Well, shifting Ceratops to times four says hi next match. You ready? I'm ready. Yeah, so let's get out. It doesn't matter. That's, that's all it takes to win. It's just you get that lucky, and he did. So shifting Ceratops times four, it is. Yes, sir, Bob. Uh, Thrash and Threat seem good, but, you know, Wildwood Trackers is crap. I think Thrash times two here for Lovestruck and a Vivian. Yeah. So the shifting Ceratops are... Are in specifically for the Hydroid Crisis. Everything else is just a nice bonus. He won't get bounced, blah, blah, blah. He can have trample. So look how terrible this is. We're getting punished for even thinking about... Do you hear that stupid bug? This game is so glitchy. It's insane. All right. So now we have a Hydroid Crisis animation with each card we play. Or is it just on the opening hand and the draw? Whatever. So we need a land. But this will work in the meantime. It's unfortunate we have two Yorvo, even though they're really good, but they're legendary, so you can't like play two of them. All right. Ooh, very nice. In, in fact, it's super nice. Let's get some damage in. Down to 11, but what does it matter? Because he's going to be up to 4, and 4 is a lot of fun here with Nightpack Ambusher, etc, etc. But Yorvo coming down means our Pelt Collector is going to be a 4-4. Four, four. 
I don't know. I could try and put Yorvo down, and then he could just uh, Frilled Mystic me, right? Frilled Mystic, and then I have a pretty useless turn. Yep, pretty useless turn. So I want to go for pure value here. So we're going in only with the Questing Beast. I wish I could go in with the Pelt Collector, but he would just one for one, and I don't want that. So next turn, uh, try for Yorvo again. So three, four. He's at four. I mean, we're getting close to lethal here. Does he have another filled mystic, though, is a question. Or any counter in general. Probably yes. Right? Probably yes. Here we go. Cool. All right. So we're just going to keep beating down with the questing beast. We got rid of two of his counters. That makes me feel pretty good. We're going to go in with the paradise druid, too, right? No, we're not. We're going to hold back because... Well, next turn we can Thrash Threat. I guess I could have went in. Maybe that was the play. Come on, dude. You know you want to sacrifice it. You can't with the Paradise. There you go. Good job. One more plus one plus one counter on Pelt Collector, and he gets Trample. And when we're this close to lethal, that's very, very important. So what's he got here? Nissa, probably, right? Nissa's not going to be good enough, though. I mean, it could be, I guess, with counters and stuff, if he has clutch counters. So three, four, five, six. Of course, it's Nissa. So now he's going to have four, two. He has two, two mana. What do you think that is, guys? What do you think it is? Right. Hey, this is actually pretty awesome. Look at this. So creature to that. Counter, you ready? It doesn't matter though if he did, right? So this is actually pretty insane. Pretty insane. He only has one land. So we're dealing damage to the Nissa. So Nissa's dead. We're going in. Too bad we don't have the trample. <sighs> What say you? He has another land and another this. All right, good. So did I want to trade one more thing? I'm trying to remember. No, this looks good enough. We're on the draw. Unfortunately, only two lands, but turn one, good play. Turn two, that gives us three mana. And then hopefully we just draw one more land in the next couple turns. Because questing beast times four is pretty cool. Granted, we don't get countered to death. All right, so is he going to quench this? That would be pretty bad for us. Although we have a second one here, so I guess it's not the end of the world, technically. Cool. Pelt Collector's getting a little bit big. Not much. Bounce? No. Okay. Growth Spiral. So three and then four next turn. All right, so he's officially turned oppressive. Because now he can Frilled Mystic, he can do all sorts of crazy shenanigans. Very nice, very nice. So we have three, four. I have four Questing Beasts, guys. So unless, unless he has a Frilled Mystic, this is a good play. I like it. Going in with the Questing Beast solo, because he could have a Nightpack Ambusher. And that would take care of our Pelt Collector. We don't want that. We want him to just keep getting bigger. Be a threat. One more plus one plus one. He has Trample. So he, he's got a... He has something oppressive. He, he does. It's just he's deciding what to do with his... So what's he have? A Growth Spiral? Or is he just going to flash in a Night Pack? I do like this Questing Beast here. So much. There we go. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. You ready? Ooh, spooky. All right, so this lets us survive a quench. Let's do it. He probably has just a regular old hard counter, sinister sabotage, or a frilled mystic. No? Wow. That is, that is bad for him. That is really bad. Uh, yeah. That is bad for him. He could flash something else in. Another Night Pack Ambusher would be pretty devastating, honestly. Don't you dare have it. No. He's got a bounce. 
Another bounce. This is fine. I get one damage through and I'm neutering his uh, options here. Yorvo up to five, that's very nice as well. Unless he wants to blow a counter, which also nice as well. So now Yorvo can threaten, you know, he can block any attempts from anything on his side of the board essentially. Where's my shifting ceratops though? I really, really, really want that. I haven't seen one Aether Gust from the guy. So you know he's not gonna play anything. His only chance here really is to get extra wolves out or like a Nissa. That's that's not good enough. Why did you get rid of a chance for a 3-3 for that? That that makes no sense, guys. So I think I'm just gonna keep pushing and threatening. Because I can still survive a quench here. As much as I'd like to get the growth chamber guardian down, right? Because that would give me card advantage, but I have three questing beasts. I need to take advantage of the haste, the death touch, the vigilance, all of that. He might just have a, uh, look at this, look at this. Yeah, good game, good game.